Yeah, Sister Linda over here, they went to, this is uh, in um, Pisa, or Pizza. This statue, if you can call it that, is actually called Fallen Angel. Okay? And it's there in, in Rome. Here's, and all, she took pictures all over Europe. Some of these statues have a little box cut out where there's a, a human head in there. Haven't figured out why. Okay, haven't figured out why yet. Uh, here's another one. See the box there with the human head in it? That's wacky stuff. Okay. Humans mingled with beasts. Not possible, right? Impossible. Couldn't happen. Couldn't be that way. Correct? Unless you just believe what God said. Genesis 6. Let's go there. Had a, uh, I did some uh, radio interviews uh, Thursday, right after PMO. Uh, Southwest Radio called. And um, I've been doing things for them for... Oh my goodness, probably close to 15, 16 years. And uh, Brother Noah Hutchings was uh, just a, a tremendous man of God. I loved him dearly. Uh, he's now gone on to be with the Lord. But um, something that he did before he died was he called me and said, I want you and your wife to get on a plane and come out to Oklahoma City. So we did. And uh, he told me that in the next few years, he would either be dead or retired, and he was 90 then. And uh, he wanted me to take his position. He offered me his job, and uh, I turned it down graciously. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I did. I love them. So I still do things with them every now and then, and was talking with Brother Larry Spargimino, um, who does mission work in Pakistan and so on, and he was, the, he was the one interviewing me. And he and I were in agreement about what was in Genesis 6 and the meaning of the sons of God and the daughters of men. Now, I'm going to say this. There, there is disagreement um, among some dear saints of God over... The meaning of this passage. There are some who believe the Bible. They believe the King James. They believe the word of God. But they do not see this as being angels with human women. I respect that. But I don't agree with it. What I see clearly in the scriptures. Is what exactly the scriptures Say, I'm a stickler for these words mean what these words mean. So we don't interpret the Bible. The Bible interprets the Bible. So let's, let's apply those rules. Genesis 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God. The phrase sons of God, you'll see it in Genesis. You'll see it in Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2, Job, I think it's Job 38, I'm not positive. But there he talks about the host of heaven, the sons of God, and the morning stars. So the sons of God in the book of Job are the stars, they are the angels. The only um, occurrences of the phrase sons of God in the Old Testament other than Genesis they all refer to the angels in the New Testament the phrase sons of God is exclusively given to a, a title to the church the redeemed but the redeemed when we leave this world and are in heaven, we are as the angels in heaven. Jesus said that. 
So then the phrase sons of God would still apply to meaning angels. There is no place anywhere in the book of Genesis or anywhere in the Old Testament or anywhere in the Bible that tells us that the sons of God are the lineage of Seth, which is the other interpretation of this passage. Okay? There's only, there's only two ways of looking at this. You either see these sons of God as being angels, or you see them as being the generation or the offspring of Seth, and then they say the daughters of men are the offspring of Cain. So you have the righteous offspring of Seth mingling with the wicked offspring of Cain. Even though the Bible does not say that. It does not say that anywhere. But even if you believe that it's the offspring of Seth and the offspring of Cain, you're left with a question. How is it that a righteous man marrying an unrighteous woman produces a baby that's 13 feet tall? Okay? That doesn't happen. So there must be a reasonable, logical, biblical answer to that question. I believe God has everything in his Bible, and every question that we can come up with can be answered by the scriptures. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth. Do you believe that? I mean, we believe in giants, dragons, and unicorns. That doesn't make us weird, does it? The blood of Christ on us makes us weird to the world. Amen. There were giants in the earth in those days, meaning before the flood, and also after that, meaning after the flood. We know that there were giants before the flood, because he just said that. We know there were giants after the flood, and the Bible then gives us a record of those nations that were giants. And we're going to look into those here in a little bit. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. And now it's going to tell you how the giants got here. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now, I search the internet. I don't necessarily sit and watch YouTube videos because there's so much garbage on YouTube. Got to watch these guys that make YouTube videos. I'm telling you, watch out for these guys. Never know what you're going to end up with. Amen. But, it, but there's some good stuff out there, okay? My videos. Anyway. Obviously, I agree with my own videos. Okay. Anyway, there's a book that I came across uh, written in 1879, The Fallen Angels and the Heroes of Mythology. So that got my attention. I downloaded this. You, this is a free book. Go to books.google.com. Type in The Fallen Angels and the Heroes of Mythology. You can get a PDF or an EPUB or a Moby, I think, of this book. It's free because the copyright has, has expired on it. And a lot of the books that were written in the 1800s are on Google Books. Google sent people out to all these universities and they went through all their libraries scanning all of these old books and they're accessible on the internet. It is a treasure trove of, and I love old books. 
I do. So I've read this one and, and he makes some, some pretty good, he makes a pretty good argument for the sons of God being angels. In this book, he said, there are those, however, who believe that the pagan traditions, talking about all the pagan stories about giants, were not pure inventions, not wholly without foundation. And who are able to see in those famous legends of the Greeks, which tell of the more than earthly origin of the giants and titans, of their wars with Saturn and Jupiter, and of the marvelous feats which they performed, an unmistakable reference to real events. I have a friend, the, the doctor that introduced me to the idea that the human cell was a picture of the tabernacle, Dr. Chuck Thurston. And he called these stories the fossilized remains of biblical accounts. In other words, all the myths about giants, whether they were the titans in Greece or the giants in England or the giants in China or the giants in Africa or the giants in South America, Central America, North America, wherever stories of giants occurred, he called them the fossils of Bible, of the truth of the word of God. In other words, the Bible tells the true and accurate version of it. But then you have in these stories all over the world, the fossilized remains of these true events. They tell a story that in some points is similar and matches the biblical account. Not only do they tell the story of giants and the gods who sired these giants, because they all say all of these myths, Every single legend of giants tells you that their fathers were the gods, the spiritual entities who mated with human women. In all of the myths and fables and legends about giants, there's nothing about the lineage of Seth and the lineage of Cain. There's nothing about they, were, they came about from human men and human women. All of them have the same idea that the gods mated with human women, married human women, and sired, fathered children out of these. So he says, uh, let's see here, the brief narrative of which forms a portion of the Old Testament scripture and may be read in the words of the authorized English version in the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis. So basically what he says in a nutshell in this, in this whole volume, and you can, like I say, you can download it right now if you want to. Um, is basically the same thing that I'm going to tell you is that these sons of God were angelic beings. The daughters of men were human women. There was marriages taking place. What's interesting to me is that when Jesus talked about the future events as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man, he said, for as in the days of Noah, they were marrying and giving in marriage. And the only reference to marriage from the days of Noah are the sons of God marrying the daughters of men. Wow. You can say that backwards. <laughs> Sounds the same, doesn't it? So anyway, so they build sculptures all over the world. Now, what I'm going to do here for a minute is uh, people like me who say sons of God, daughters of men, angels and human women making these giants, there is some criticism naturally and from King James Bible believers. I won't mention any names, but if I, if I told you some of the names and who they were associated with, you, I don't want to hurt their reputation because they're good, honest, I believe Bible believers who are promoting the word of God and i I don't have a problem with that, but one video in particular that I watched, he was really scathing about anybody who believes that these are angels saying that if you want to read this, if you want to get your garbage from the book of Enoch, go ahead. But the book of Enoch is not scripture. And I agree with that 100%. It's been 15 years since I read the book of Enoch. All right. I don't go back to it. I don't reference it. I don't, I don't need to. Part of it may be factual, maybe kind of true, but there's parts of the book of Enoch that are just, I mean, if you're on LSD, 
that might sound logical if you're reading, but, but the book of Enoch is weird. Anyway, so what I did, though, was I went back to Google Books and I looked through commentaries and old books from the 1800s to see if we were the only ones who believed that way, that these were angels and human women. And I, and I think the mixture is about half and half. If you look at old commentaries from the 1800s, 1700s, and so on, some authors will say this was the sons of Seth and the daughters of Cain, while others will say these were the angels and human women. This book here, Commentary on the Holy Bible, uh, edited by the Reverend J.R. Dumelo from Queen's College, Cambridge, uh, from England. This is 1915. He said, uh, let's see here. The sons of God, this expression occurs in other passages, such as Job chapter 1, Job verses 38, Daniel 3 and so on, where it is evident that the angels are meant. And this seems the only possible explanation here. It used to be supposed that the sons of God meant the Sethites who became corrupted by marriage with the Canaanites. But the phrase is nowhere else used to describe them. And as Bishop Ryle remarks, the popular assumption that Cain's descendants were preeminently wicked has no foundation either. Nor could such unions have produced the race of giants mentioned in verse 4. The religious idea suggested is that the wickedness that prevailed was too great to be entirely of mere human origin. The general meaning is that, the, that God now sets a limit, 120 years to human life, which up to this time had been an indefinitely long period of time. Uh, there, he says there were giants, the Nephilim, that's the Greek or the Hebrew word Nephilim, the race of giant, giants, famous in popular legend, represented as being men of renown at the same time as these angels formed unions with the daughters of men. So this commentary from 1915 said that they were angels. Here's another one. This is the book of Ju Jubilees. This is called the Little Genesis. The book of Jubilees was written about 160 B.C., translated uh, into English, and the book of Jubilees says, And it came to pass when the children of men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the angels of God saw them on a certain year of this Jubilee, that they were beautiful to look upon, and they took themselves wives of all whom they chose, and they bare unto them sons, and they were giants. And that, like I say, was written in about 160 B.C., Justin Martyr, one of the early church fathers, uh, said this. This father who died in A.D. 167 says in his second apology for the Christians, chapter 5, he says, God, when he had made the whole world and subjected things earth, earthly to man and arranged the heavenly elements for the increase of fruits and the rotation of the seasons and appointed this divine law, for these things also he had ev evidently made for man, committed the care of men and of all things under heaven to angels who be appointed over them. But the angels transgressed this appointment and were captivated by love of women and begat children. And like I say, that was, he died in 167 AD. Uh, let's see here. Bible problems explained. This is from Moody Press. This was written in, let's see, what year can I find here? Uh, I can't see the date here. It's probably because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. What, you can see it? Oh, yeah, I did. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, what is the significance of the phrase sons of God? And it says, I believe it refers to the angels. But the context must determine whether good or evil angels are meant. In the first instance, the reference seems to be evil angels. And in the other two, certainly in that, the last, to good angels. The evil angels, I should say, were the same in character and relationship as those mentioned in Revelation 12, 9, to which the inquirer refers. So he said, 1913, that they, the sons of God, were angels. Another book. Published by Moody Press, 1922, Gleanings in Genesis by author Arthur Pink. He said the reference in Jude 6 to the angels leaving their own habitation appears to point to and correspond with these sons of God, parentheses angels, coming in unto the daughters of men. So, 
He believed that the sons of God were the angels. And he brings in Jude 6 here. Turn to Jude 6. Let's look at what it says. These angels went after strange flesh. Did they not? That's what the Bible says. Here we go. Jude 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate. That estate was heaven. And in heaven, Jesus said, they are forbidden to marry. But he said it exclusively of the angels which are in heaven. So these angels left, according to Jude, their first estate, which was heaven. They left that realm. They came down to earth. They left their first state, but left their own habitation. Hath he reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under the judgment of the great day. So these angels that did this, where are they right now? They are in the lower parts of the earth, in prison, in chains, bound until judgment. Okay, so, I mean, God took this thing. Job said that he charged his angels with folly, foolishness. And there are several instances in the Bible where the word folly refers to fornication. Here's another one. The Christian Workers Magazine, 1916. It says, we would restate the matter as follows. Reading Genesis 6, it is observed that certain beings termed sons of God are said to have consorted with daughters of Adam. Who are these sons of Elohim? The contrast between the two terms suggests other than human beings, for the natural description of these latter would be sons of Adam. Also, if Sethites and Canaanites were meant, why were not those terms used for so no ambiguity would have been left. In other words, if God wanted us to know that they were sons of Seth, why didn't he say sons of Seth? No, that's not what he said. He said sons of God. The presumption that angelic beings are meant is strongly confirmed when it is found that in the other places in Scripture where this exact term is employed, it plainly means angels. So, we're left with, and, and, you know, commentaries are commentaries. And I don't spend a lot of time reading commentaries. But I wanted to find out what men of other generations thought about this event. And like I say, you get about half saying they were sons of Seth. But then you get early church fathers, Justin Martyr, uh, Josephus, the Jewish historian believed that they were angels, fallen angels. So you have men of old saying this. You have men a hundred or so years ago saying the same thing. This book called The Century Bible, uh, edited by uh, W.H. Bennett, 1904. He said, uh, the marriages of the angels. Certain angels marry women and these unions, and to these unions were born the ancient heroes. Meaning the giants, sons of God, Old Testament phrase referring to angelic beings. And so there, there are, and here's another one, Christian Workers Magazine. In searching for a different explanation, we find that sons of God is used everywhere else in the Old Testament to designate angels. And why should it not be so used here? So we're not the only ones now in this day and age who say that these sons of God would have been angels. We're not the only ones. There are others who came before us who believe this as well. But again, just because somebody believes something, that does not necessarily make it true or untrue. The final authority is always going to be the Word of God. So, Job 38, 7. Stars are angels. This is what we're going to learn. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. 
So the stars are the sons of God. They're put together in the same verse. And this is God's way of telling you who the sons of God are before Christ. They were the angelic beings. After Christ, it's us. But we're going to move into their house. Because a third of the angels are getting tossed. They didn't pay the rent. Amen? And they're up there cooking meth and doing all kinds of terrible things. So we're going to run them out. Amen? But those houses are going to be empty. So now think, think Bible on this. Can, the Canaanite inhabitants were giants. And God said to Israel, I'm not giving you this land because you're good people. I'm giving you this land because the inhabitants are bad people. And I want them cleansed out and I'm going to give you their houses to live in. So that's our example in scriptures. Revelation 12, stars are angels. Revelation 12, 4, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Then in verse 7 and verse 9, it tells you that it was the stars that he cast out were the angels angels verse 9 of revelation 12 the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him stars are what angels you mean all of those little points of light up in the sky do we mean those are angels why not what are angels made of fire all of those little dots of light what are they burning gas or whatever that's what we're told the sun is and it's on fire we're seeing i believe angels now the guys with the telescopes they look and they say oh we can see this gas and we can see this we can see that that's all well and good but my Bible says they're angels. Uh, Daniel 8, 10. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground. The host of heaven are the angels. Stars are angels. Revelation twenty two sixteen. 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you of these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning what? And the morning star is the Son of God. And the sons of God are the stars. Because the morning star is the Son of God. The morning star, by the way, is not Lucifer. Amen. Numbers 24, 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. And who's it referring to? Jesus. Because it's capitalized. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. Amos 5.26 But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chiun, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Their God, Moloch, is an evil angel and he also is a star. Stars are, angels are, this makes sense, doesn't it? Revelation 1. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the... I mean, it's just easy when you read the Bible. It's just easy to believe the Bible. Of the seven churches. Revelation 9.1. The fifth... I like this one. The fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him... It identifies this star as a person. Him was given the key of the bottomless. Now, what does a star need with a key? Unless this star is an angel that falls from heaven to the earth. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Stars are. Angels are. All right, let's look at their bodies. 
1 Corinthians 15, turn there. 1 Corinthians 15 is an awesome chapter in the Bible. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. The um, radio interviews I did with Southwest Radio were uh, on the Seed series. There's four uh, videos that go with that series. And they were liking the things that I said about seed and, and so on. We now know, I mean, think about, think about us living in the time that we live right now. A hundred years ago, nobody really knew what seed was. I mean, they knew what it did, but they didn't know what it was. But now in our generation, we are the ones who know that any kind of seed in the world is a bundle of DNA. A bundle of instructions laid out in book format, written by God himself, that determines the shape and type of living creature that it represents. Hey, think, amen? That's what DNA is. And even though all of us are human, each one of us is unique and different in a way because your DNA belongs to you and it makes your face the way it is and it makes your body the way it is and your hair or lack thereof the way it is and your skin color the way it is and so on and so on and so on. And then everybody has, in many cases, the same DNA, but each one of us has a little bit of uniqueness to ourselves. But in every one of us is a man named Adam. Amen? Technically, he's still alive just in over 7 billion people, okay? That's how big he's gotten over the years. Putting on a lot of weight, all right? Anyway, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 37. That which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Very important to know that. Because if we believe that stars are angels, and we believe that the sons of God were angels, then that leaves another question of, how did that work? Right? I mean, you know, what's going on with that? So, the Bible gives us the answer. All flesh is not the same flesh. There's one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. Notice there's four here. Four. But in 2018 and 2019 and 2020 and 2021, the line that separates man from beasts, from fishes, and from birds... That line is getting awfully fuzzy. And the line that separates the different kinds of creatures in this world is slowly but surely being taken away. Because who was it? University of Chicago. Who told me that? You did. Told me that in the University of Chicago they're doing experiments with different animals mingling their DNA together. Chimeras, the Greek called them. A chimera was a combination of like a reptile and a bird and the tail of a snake and it was a mythological creature, right? Not possible, right? Now it is. Now it is. Now they can make a bird grow a serpent's tail. Why not? What else can they do? They can give a monkey a boost of human DNA that makes their brain more like a human brain. Now we're getting scary. Imagine the intellect of a human mixed in with the savagery of a beast. You have a person without a conscience. Amen? And this is not science fiction anymore, people. When I first started the Watchman broadcast, it wasn't even science. Now it is. Okay? All flesh is not the same flesh. 
I already read that. Verse 40, look at that. There are also celestial what? Bodies. Do you believe your Bible? So is it right to say that angels don't have bodies? No, it's not right to say that. That's not, the Bible says differently. There are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There's one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Glory means brilliance, brightness, the way it shines. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Notice the opposites. But verse 44, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual, say it, body. And according to verse 38, every seed has its own body. And if it has a body, then it has seed. So do we believe that um, spirits have DNA? Genesis 3. Well, you guys are sleepy, aren't you? I'm watching, I'm looking at you giggling. Pulled pork. You're blaming it on the pulled pork, aren't you? Genesis 3, 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He's talking to who? The serpent. And between thy... There it is. Satan has DNA. Between thy seed... And her seed. The woman has DNA, right? So if it's true, in the same verse, scholars want you to believe that the woman has DNA, but the serpent doesn't. But it's in the same verse, and it says the exact same thing about both of them, that they both have seed. And that the serpent's seed hates the woman's seed. But the woman's seed hates the serpent's seed. Amen? The woman's seed is Jesus. The serpent's seed is... Another Jesus. A different Jesus. If any man say, lo, here's Christ, or there, it's that Christ. Anti-Christ. All right? So that's, their bodies are made of seed. A bundle of instructions laid out in book form, written by God, that establishes what their body consists of. Genesis 18. Look at the angels that met Abraham. Three men walking down the road. One of them was the Lord Jesus Christ. The other two were angels. We know that because in the next chapter, the Bible says they're angels. But in Genesis 18, 1, the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of, of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them. From the tent door. The Bible says they were men. Bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord. One of them was the Lord. If now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your dead feet. And rest yourselves from under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quick, quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it. Make the cakes upon the heart. And Sarah's probably going, Abraham, you don't have to tell me how to make cakes. <laughs> been, making, been making your cakes for 75 years. I'm telling you that. Or 90 years. Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it to the young man. He hasted. Notice he didn't tell the young man how to fix the cow. <laughs> Abraham's got to tell Sarah how to bake a cake. She already knows. And he took butter and milk and the calf, which he had dressed it and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. And then they fell asleep like you guys are doing. Huh? All right. Good day. Everybody's <laughs> wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This happens every year. Homecoming. <laughs> Genesis 19. Uh, these angels had feet. They were washed. They sat down, which means they had a bottom. 
They ate, which means they had teeth. And they swallowed it. What happened? I don't know what happened after that. I just know that their bodies were very, very similar to ours. Genesis 19. In fact, so similar to ours. Genesis 19, there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. In verse 3, he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in, to, in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread. And they, here they are eating again. And won't these angels carry their own food around? Okay, but they, now they're eating again. And then verse 4. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round both of old and young, and all the people from every quarter, and they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. We know what that means, don't we? They were going to sodomize the angels. It's wicked. Wicked. Amen? So, if the men of Sodom would have sodomized the men... These were angels. The reverse. They have bodies. And according to 1 Corinthians 15, that body contains a form of seed. DNA. All right? Um, and I think, turn to Daniel 2. I think, that their DNA, you want to hear what I think? That's why you came here, isn't it? Daniel. Chapter 3. No, Daniel chapter 2, I'm sorry. Verse 41, I think their seed, their DNA is made of iron. This is the iron kingdom, correct? And I want you to notice verse 43, whereas thou saw iron mixed with miry clay, miry clay is us, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Now, is, can, I, can I logically, reasonably say, now can I 100% say that their DNA is made of iron? No, I can't say that. Can I reasonably guess that? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Our DNA is made of something. What's it made of? Phosphorus. Phosphorus is a mineral. Oh, thank you. Am I out? Must be getting there. Phosphorus is a mineral. So is iron. Look at Daniel 5. Verse, wow. <laughs> Verse 23. But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of this house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines, have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of what? What were those gods made of? And the gods of? What were those gods made of? Gold. And the gods of brass. And what? Iron. What were those gods made of? Iron. Do you not know, turn to Ezekiel 28, that Satan, Lucifer, is in part made of gold. Ezekiel 28.
Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and Satan's own body is made of ten precious stones. One of them is gold. Think about it. When God said that this kingdom was an iron kingdom mixed with miry clay, we know that we're made of miry clay. So what are these specific beings made of? Say iron. Because it says in Daniel 5, 23, that they are God's. And he said, he gave the whole list. In Daniel 2, we have gold, silver, brass, and iron. And in Daniel 5, 23, we have gods of gold, gods of silver, gods of brass, and God of, gods of iron. Just like in Daniel chapter 2. Okay? I know that's wild. That's out there. That's probably something you never thought of before. But follow the script. Follow, find, find it in the Bible. Then you can decide whether I'm right or I'm wrong. Let God be true and every man a liar. And boy, I can come up with some doozies.